So we have TX, which kind of is a place where the tumor cannot be assessed. You are not able to kind of assess this particular tumor because maybe it is kind of already excised or it is kind of partially excised or due to one or the other reason, you are not able to assess that particular T stage. Now, a very, very important topic is the TNM staging of the head and neck malignancy. So in the general kind of surgery, at least the TNM staging of your breast and head and neck, this is something which should be absolutely, absolutely kind of known to you. Others you should obviously know, but these are the ones which you definitely need to know. So let's kind of go through it. What is kind of included over here? So we have TX, which kind of is a place where the tumor cannot be assessed. You are not able to kind of assess this particular tumor because maybe it is kind of already excised or it is kind of partially excised or due to one or the other reason you're not able to assess that particular t stage that is when you kind of give it as a tx t0 means there is no evidence of the primary tumor that is occult primary that is what is your t0 then tis basically is the carcinoma in situ and this is important t1 t2 and t3 now what you need to understand is that in the 8th agcc they have also included the depth of invasion so let's kind of talk about this so here we are going to consider two parameters one is going to be the size of the lesion and another parameter which we are going to consider is the depth of invasion in the t1 category what do we have the tumor needs to be less than two centimeter in the greatest dimension okay and the depth of invasion should be less than five millimeters okay i hope it makes sense the size should be less than 2 centimeters and the depth of invasion should be less than 5 millimeters. Then we call it as a T1. What about the T2? In the T2, the size can be between 2 to 4 centimeters. And if at all the size is basically between 2 to 4 centimeters, the maximum depth of invasion can be up to 10 millimeters. Okay, that is one category. That is, size of the tumor is more than 2 and this less than 4. Depth of invasion is less than 10 millimeters. Or in the, on, the, on the other hand, let's say if at all this uh, patient is having a tumor of let's say 1 centimeter in size, but the depth of invasion is 9 millimeters, then we will kind of include it again in the T2 category. So if at all the size of the tumor is less than 2, but the depth of invasion is basically between 5 to 10 millimeters, then again we give it as a T2 lesion. I hope I'm making some sense over here. And the T3 is pretty simple. If at all there is a size of the tumor which is more than kind of 4 centimeters in the maximum dimension, or the depth of invasion is more than 10 millimeters, then we call it as a T3. So I hope you got this TX, T0 and T1, T2, T3. Got it? Now there is T4 category also. So the T3 tuck, it was kind of localized to your tuck. Now in the T4, what is going to happen? It is going to involve the surrounding structures as well. So in the T4, it is further subdivided into T4A and the T4B. In the T4A, we basically say that, okay, it is moderately advanced local disease. So essentially, if you want to just understand this, what we need to know is T4A is a kind of a condition where it is involving some or the other structure which can be excised. Even if you excise it, it is not going to kind of kill that particular patient. It is sustainable. You can go with reconstruction or something else and it is kind of doable. So what are the kind of things included over here? So let's say if it was involving the lip or the cheek involvement, or let's say there is a cortical bone involvement or there is a skin involvement or the inferior alveolar nerve involvement or the tongue that is extrinsic muscles of the tongue are involved. So let's assume that tongue is involved. We can go ahead with the glossectomy, right? Yeah, we can go ahead with that. Okay, if at all the mandible is involved, we can go ahead with the mandibulectomy. So that is what is included in your T4A. What about the T4B? This is a very advanced local disease. Okay, so what is this? This is a very advanced local disease. And this is what you need to understand. There's a cheek involvement and involvement of the mastication space, base of the skull and the internal carotid artery. So here there is a cheek involvement, involvement of the mastication space and base of the skull is involved and the internal carotid artery is kind of involved. I hope you are able to understand this particular point. So here we cannot kind of do without it okay if at all let's say the base of the skull is involved you cannot cut the skull into half and throw it off okay so here now it becomes inoperable i hope i'm making some sense over here guys okay so this is very very important so t1 t2 t3 maximum size two less than two centimeters depth of invasion less than five millimeters t2 is basically two to four centimeters and depth of invasion five to ten millimeters t3 is more than four centimeters depth of invasion more than ten millimeters and here if at all it is involving certain structures which you can remove that is t4a if you cannot remove that is t4b i hope you got this point okay so what you need to understand is that in this eight agcc uh, kind of update what they have said that you know what this depth of invasion it is having an independent prognostic factor so this is important depth of invasion has a independent prognostic factor and that is why it is also included over here got it now let's talk about the lymph nodes okay so this is again very very important they have asked this so many times in the neat pg and they can definitely ask you so n0 is obviously no known that's fine what is n1 
N1 is a single and the ipsilateral and the size less than 3 centimeters. Okay, so if we tell you have a single lymph node on the same side with the size less than 3 centimeters, that is what is N1. What about the N2? N2 can be divided into N2A, N2B, and N2C. What is N2A? N2A is again a single and then ipsilateral, and the size is basically between 3 to 6 centimeters. So N1, single ipsilateral less than 3. N2A, single ipsilateral between 3 to 6 centimeters. What about N2B? N2B is a multiple ipsilateral and the size is less than 6 centimeters. Okay, so N2B is multiple lymph nodes on the same side and the size is basically less than 6 centimeters. What about the N2C? Here you have a bilateral or a contralateral lymph node, but the size again should to be kind of less than 6 centimeters. Okay, hope you got this. I kind of revise it with you, but yeah, I hope you got this. What about the N3 and N3B? N3A is any lymph node which is more than 6 centimeters, and this N3P it has kind of given it extra nodal extension. Now this extra nodal extension is, has again been added in your, you know, 8th AJCC and that is again an independent prognostic factor. We'll talk about this. But yeah, this is essentially your lymph node staging. So it's pretty simple. N1 is single ipsilateral less than 3 centimeters. N2 we divide into N2 A, N2 B, N2 C. N2 A is single ipsilateral less than 6 centimeters. N2 kind of B is multiple ipsilateral size less than 6 centimeters. N2 C is either it's a bilateral or a contralateral lymph node size less than 6 centimeters. N2 C. What about N3? N3 is basically size more than 6 centimeters anywhere. Okay, if at all, let's say the single ipsilateral lymph node, 8 centimeter in size, it is going to be N3. I hope you got this point. Okay, right. N3 can be divided into N3A and N3B. N3A is size, and N3B is including your something which is called as an extra nodal extension. Now, as you see, this extra nodal extension, it has been given an independent prognostic factor in the 8th AJCC classification. I hope you are able to understand this point. Okay, so if at all, the you know, External extension is kind of positive or present either clinically you kind of palpate it and you feel that okay it's a matted and it is kind of fixed to the other structures or radiographically you did an MRI which is basically saying that the cortex has kind of gone and this kind of mixing with the surrounding tissue this is what is going to give it as a N3B category. Okay. Hope you got this that is what is a T and the N stage very very important and then you have a metastasis if you don't notice in metastasis that is M0 and if you the metastasis is present that is what is M1 disease. I hope you got this point. Now let's talk about the exception to the N stage okay. So even though these particular malignancies are the malignancies of your head and neck if at all they occur these do not behave in the same manner as the generalized TNM N staging which we have just talked about. What are the malignancies included over here? Thyroid nasopharyngeal carcinomas then mucosal melanomas and their skin. So these are the ones which are not included in the way which we have talked about. Okay, I hope you got this point. Now, pathological kind of mucosal specimen, it basically is 30% kind of smaller. So this is important because the what you need to understand is that our staging was basically uh, based on the size of the tumor as well. So we have to keep this into consideration that whatever the pathological specimen which we get, if at all we are going ahead with a pathological kind of a TNM staging, then that particular tumor might be kind of a bit shrink because the pathological mucosal specimen is 30% smaller than the original one. Hope you got disappointed. Basically, shrinks up. Okay. Now let's talk about the lymph node kind of dissection. So I hope we have kind of done till here what we talked about. To begin with, we talked about the different pre malignant conditions. We talked about whether it's a high grade, moderate grade, or the or a high risk, moderate risk, or the low risk malignancy of undergoing a malignancy, malignant change, that's fine. Then we talked about the TNM staging. Mm -hmm.